What if everything you thought you knew about Neanderthals was wrong? Recent genetic discoveries are shaking the very foundations of human history. We're not just talking about primitive cave dwellers here. Try blonde hair, blue eyes, and light skin. Yes, you heard that right. Ancient DNA is revealing that some Neanderthals may have looked more like Nordic supermodels than Hollywood cavemen. This isn't a sci-fi fantasy, it's hard genetic evidence. So why haven't you heard about it until now? Welcome to Secrets Beyond Time. Today we uncover the truth buried in your DNA. Want more wild truths about our ancient cousins? Hit subscribe and let's get started. Neanderthals weren't just our ancient neighbors, they were family. Around 40,000 to 60,000 years ago, modern humans and Neanderthals met in Eurasia. And they didn't just wave from a distance. They mingled. They mixed. They made babies. Thanks to this ancient rendezvous, nearly all non-African people today carry between 1 to 2 percent Neanderthal DNA. Scientists have identified specific Neanderthal gene variants that were absorbed into our genome, some affecting immunity, others influencing behavior, and yes, some tied to physical appearance. The blending happened mostly between 47,000 and 45,000 years ago, with hotspots in regions like the Caucasus. The big surprise? These ancient genes weren't random leftovers. They were selected and preserved because they offered survival advantages. Think of Neanderthal DNA like an ancient upgrade pack installed into Homo sapiens. It's one of the reasons why understanding Neanderthal genetics isn't just about the past. It's about understanding ourselves. Let's bust the myth. Not all Neanderthals were dark, hairy brutes lurking in caves. In fact, some might have looked more like Icelandic backpackers than your old history textbook drawings. How do we know? DNA. One of the key players here is the MC1R gene, a gene that controls melanin production, which affects hair and skin color. Scientists discovered Neanderthal variants of MC1R that disrupt melanin pathways, leading to lighter skin and even red hair. Harvard researchers went further and suggested that about 1% of Neanderthals were redheads. Let that sink in. A red-headed Neanderthal. These lighter pigmentation genes didn't just stop with them. Some were passed on to us, lingering in modern European populations. This wasn't accidental. Lighter skin was better suited for the low UV levels of Ice Age Europe, helping produce vitamin D in sunlight-starved environments. So, far from being uniform in appearance, Neanderthals were diverse, and some of them might have looked a lot more like us than we imagined. A pale face and fiery locks? That might just be in your ancestry. Now here's where things get even more jaw-dropping. Neanderthals with blue eyes and blonde hair. Yes, the very traits once thought exclusive to modern Europeans may actually trace back to our Neanderthal cousins. The star of this chapter is the OCA2-HERC2 gene complex, two tightly linked genes that influence eye and hair pigmentation. In modern humans, specific variants of these genes are associated with blue eyes and lighter hair shades, especially in European populations. What's wild is that similar variants have been found in ancient Neanderthal DNA. One particular Neanderthal-derived haplotype near these genes has been shown to exist in high frequencies in Europeans and Central Asians. It likely entered the Homo sapiens gene pool during the interbreeding phase and stuck around because, well, it was useful or attractive. Maybe both. Evolution doesn't always explain why something is considered good-looking, but if blue eyes helped someone find a mate, that gene had a future. Recent studies even suggest that these pigmentation variants were under positive selection, meaning natural forces actively preserved and spread them. So, if your baby blues earn you compliments, you might owe a thank you to a Neanderthal ancestor who passed along that sparkle. Of course, science wouldn't be science without a little squabbling, not all researchers agree on just how blonde or blue-eyed Neanderthals really were. The problem? Pigmentation traits are polygenic, meaning they're controlled by a cocktail of genes, not just one or two. That makes decoding ancient DNA a bit like trying to guess a painting from just a few brush strokes. 
Some geneticists argue that while Neanderthals had the genes associated with lighter traits, it's unclear how those genes actually expressed themselves. After all, having a gene doesn't guarantee it was active, or even looked the same in their bodies as it does in ours. Environmental factors also complicate the picture. For instance, lighter skin evolved in low UV climates for vitamin D synthesis, but cultural preferences and sexual selection may have also played a role. Did Neanderthals find fair features attractive too? It's impossible to say, unless we find an ancient love poem buried somewhere. But here's the kicker. The more data we get, the more it points toward real diversity in Neanderthal appearance. While we may never know exactly what they looked like, it's clear they weren't the monotone cavemen we once imagined. So what does this mean for you? Yes, you with your freckled nose or strawberry blonde hair. It means you might be rocking a few ancient Neanderthal genes without even knowing it. That unique hair shade, your skin tone, or even how you tan in summer could all trace back to Ice Age romances that happened 50,000 years ago. Modern Europeans carry multiple gene variants linked to pigmentation that can be traced directly to Neanderthal ancestors. Some of these genes, like BNC2, are involved in freckling and how the skin reacts to sunlight. Others influence body hair or tanning ability. This wasn't random. These traits were favored in northern climates where the sun didn't always cooperate. Even more fascinating, some researchers suggest these features spread not just because they were useful, but also because they were attractive. Yep, our ancestors may have been swiping right on Neanderthal DNA. And if this sounds too wild to believe, remember, we now know there were thousands of years of interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans. That's a lot of time to share genes and quite possibly beauty tips. If you've ever seen a Neanderthal reconstruction at a museum and thought, why do they all look like angry gym bros with bad hair? You're not alone. For decades, artists sculpted Neanderthals based on bones and outdated assumptions. But today, science is lending artists a better palette. DNA. Modern reconstructions now factor in genetic clues, like variants in MC1R, OCA2, and BNC2, to depict Neanderthals with lighter skin, freckles, red or blonde hair, and even blue eyes. Suddenly, these ancient humans don't look so different from that one guy in Sweden who eats nothing but herring. It's a striking shift from brutish cave dweller to something a bit more familiar. These reconstructions help bridge the emotional gap between them and us, showing that Neanderthals weren't primitive outliers, but close relatives with features still walking the earth today, possibly on your very own face. So what's the final verdict? Neanderthals weren't the drab, one-look-fits-all hominins we once imagined. The latest genetic evidence paints a far richer portrait, one with blonde hair, blue eyes, freckles, red tones, and pale skin adapted for Ice Age Europe. These weren't just cosmetic quirks, they were evolutionary tools shaped by environment, culture, and yes, maybe even romance. This challenges the long-standing belief that light pigmentation traits in Europeans arose only after modern humans arrived in Europe. Instead, it suggests those traits were already present in the region and in the Neanderthals, who called it home for hundreds of thousands of years. By acknowledging their contribution to our appearance, we move beyond the tired stereotype of Neanderthals as evolutionary dead ends. They're not extinct shadows. They're part of us. Every freckle, every shade of eye color, every pale patch of skin on a winter morning tells a story that began long before written history. Science, as always, has a way of humbling us. The more we discover, the more connected we become, not just to each other, but to the deep, ancient world from which we all came. If this blew your mind even a little, go ahead, like, subscribe, and drop a comment below.